Um, I'm from the International Institute for Environment and Development, and a lot of the findings I'll be presenting um, have been relating to my work with the forest and farm facility that supports uh, smallholder forest and farm producer organizations and their business models. So I'll be looking at innovations from those and I'll be making the argument that um, organization around the twin concepts of prosperity and resilience is key to inclusive business models. Can I have the next slide? So um, my presentation will be in three parts. I'll be uh, presenting some concepts um, of prosperity, resilience, organization. I'll give just one case study uh, and then a summary of some research on uh, a, a survey of forest and farm producer organizations. And then I'll try and finish with some conclusions about future uh, FTA research. Thanks very much. So in terms of concepts, I really want to turn to three um, concepts that I think anyone working on inclusive uh, business models and value chains should, should be organizing around. Um, and if we can have the next slide, the first of these concepts is that of um, prosperity what are inclusive business models actually aiming towards? I think the concept of prosperity is um, understood to be a negotiated vision of that which people value and have reason to value in line with the common good. And uh, what they value can be uh, based on things that they're familiar with. So uh, particular environmental contexts or cultural heritages particular standards of material wealth, or it can be based on um, common interests, um, uh, sharing interests with, with people with whom one has a relationship, or, or common interests like health or security. And finally, values uh, can be based on passions, uh, trying to fulfill your personal potential, a marriage, uh, cognitive identity and purpose. Um, and Individuals pursue values, but so do businesses and nation states, and, and they're often set up as individuals to do that. Um, and, and one of the things about prosperity is that if one pursues values for self-interest, you don't get prosperity. You have to pursue values for the common good. And uh, I'd like to put forward the idea that um, inclusive business models uh, have a lot to offer in, in the generation of prosperity, in the pursuit of the common good. So if I can have the next slide. The next concept I'd like to introduce is, is one of resilience. Um, and this is really what do inclusive business models face in terms of challenges? Now, resilience as a concept can uh, be thought of as having two main components. Um, on the one hand, there's the preparedness, the risk assessment side of, of resilience. And then uh, in, on the other hand, there's the responsive side of resilience. Um, in dealing with resilience, I, I think it's important to understand that resilience has multiple levels. So resilience can be thought of at the level of the individual um, uh, resisting uh, change. Uh, it can be thought of at the level of the group, uh, sort of recovering from change, and it can be thought of at the level of the system, uh, reorganizing the system to cope better with change in the future. And of course, these changes come in many shapes and forms, uh, economic uh, changes, uh, natural disasters associated with climate change or, or even health uh, concerns such as, as COVID. And uh, organizing around resilience is something, again, that inclusive business models, because they are groups, can help their individuals um, to, to resist change, they can help to recover, and they can help to influence uh, the policies that shape uh, systems. 
So if I can have the next slide. In um, a recent body of work that we've been doing for um, WWF, we've been looking at um, uh, options uh, to better recognize and spread uh, sustainable forest management by indigenous peoples and local communities. And as we looked at the various options uh, that were being tried quite successfully in very different contexts around the world, a common denominator um, for those sorts of uh, changes um, were found to be um, accountable uh, local level organizations of different sorts. Um, so once you have accountable local organizations with finance structures embedded within them, it becomes possible to uh, develop concentric rings of, of opportunity. Um, it, it becomes possible to, to uh, you know, to, to map uh, rights for these groups. It becomes possible to help the groups uh, d uh, assess their own forest integrity. It, it becomes possible to reward them for sustainability through remote sensing and so on. And indeed, beyond that, it becomes possible to develop a number of supply chain options um, that, that uh, help uh, to, to improve their well-being operations and, and I think some of the speakers who will come after me will, will illustrate this in a nice way. If I can have the next slide. So I've, I've tried to tie together the idea that um, for inclusive business we need to have this focus on accountable organizations um, that, are, that are both pursuing prosperity and, and becoming more resilient. I'll give you one case study of how that works and then uh, look at some of the concerns from knowledge demand surveys. Okay. So this case study is from uh, the work of the Forest Farm Facility. Uh, it's one of 10 climate resilience case studies to be published later this year. At the local level, you can see that producers, in this case of cocoa, um, are um, organizing around uh, the production of cocoa. And actually they have a climate resilience plan um, that is focusing on diversifying their agroforestry systems um, to ensure that they have resilience in the face of climate change. They're also doing a lot of work to market um, indigenous wild cocoa. So this local, one of the local groups, Arcasi, um, is, is, uh, has been developing an indigenous wild cocoa marketing strategy. And you can see that the price they're getting of 5,000 US dollars per metric ton is, is, is substantially above the New York market price. But they're not alone. They are organized, five of these different associations are organized in Cochabamba under Fed Prasao Cochabamba, which is a regional association. And this regional association both adds value to the products of its members and um, helps in providing services to its members. So it's been doing things like running tasting competitions for their chocolate and cocoa products, um, making sure members get to international expos uh, in places like Colombia and so on. And through that work, they've added um, considerable, uh, considerably to, to, the, to the sales and marketing of their association members. Um, but the Fed Prasant Cochabamba is itself one of five uh, regional level associations that form a national feder federation called Coprasant Bolivia. And, um, and they are focused primarily on shaping policies, predicting hazards for their members, lobbying. And they've very successfully lobbied to secure a national cocoa program that's now worth US uh, 21.7 million over five years that's just started. So a very small amount of money from the forest and farm facility um, has helped to mobilize some considerable, I mean, and we're talking small in terms of tens of thousands of dollars, has mob mobilized considerable um, uh, inclusive uh, value chain and business development because of this core organization around resilience at the local level 
and around prosperity at the, at the bigger level. So if we can uh, move now to the next slide. So if we're looking at these uh, organizations that are doing uh, inclusive organizations that are doing business, um, what is it that they are set up to pursue? Um, we started doing knowledge demand surveys and we've covered 41 different forest and farm producer organizations in the six countries listed. And, and what you'll see is that the organizational purpose, when you ask them what values does your organization pursue, are, are covering many of the areas of prosperity that I outlined in that first slide. So they're looking to sustain their environment, of course, to generate economic wealth and, and livelihood, but to build social co equity and cohesion, to uh, fight for their rights politically, to develop their young people's education and capacity, to, to, to make sure there's gender equality and so on. Uh, so these, uh, inclusive organizations do more than just pursue profit. profit. They, they, they're very innovative in terms of pursuing broader prosperity. Next slide, please. And so when you ask them, what knowledge needs do you have to do to perform your role better? Um, you can see that we asked them in each of the categories of prosperity that I outlined in the initial side. And and what you get as a result is some very um, uh, practical areas of knowledge that they need assistance with in, in the area of um, environmental and cultural stewardship, the first area. Uh, you can see that they wanted information and options for climate resilience and how to implement climate smart agroforestry. Those were the top two. So they're, they're encountering real uh, challenges to their resilience in the field and they're asking for support from organizations to give them knowledge to deal with these sorts of challenge and in each of the areas of prosperity you'll find the same thing so the co-production of knowledge we need um, is, 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 uh, is, is, is going to need to be tailored uh, if we want to help uh, build these inclusive business models can i have the next so that brings me uh, finally to the conclusions. And, uh, and I, I will, because this is quite a science-based academic audience, I, I'll try and, and tailor my conclusions to that particular audience. So if I can have my final slide. I guess the main take-home message I would like to make is that I see the collective agency of smallholders working in inclusive business models as the the main change agents in forest landscape solutions and and uh, the cooperative smallholder business model might not necessarily um, make for a better income or, or 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 so on but it does open up the possibility of democratically accountable pursuit of some values uh, that, that local people believe to be prosperity. And that tiered levels of organization um, uh, supporting them are the way to go. So the way forward really is uh, from a science perspective is, is stronger collaborations that um, sort of reject the pursuit of extractive pursuit of knowledge in favor of co-producing knowledge about how best to strengthen their organizations, how best to secure resource rights, uh, how best to diversify in resilient agroforestry ecosystems, and how best to incubate business models that incentivize all of the above. <laughs>